Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are continuing to follow us on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. And we want to thank all those listeners um, on an ongoing basis, really, from time to time. I just want to make sure that I take a couple of moments to thank um, all the thousands of people who download the podcast each month that continues to grow. And we've got a lot of response in this last couple of months with COVID-19, a lot of crazy kind of challenging times for a lot of people. And uh, so we try to do our little part as we can in this big world to try to keep those updated on what's going on in lending and real estate and kind of the market and community. We also do some shows, as you know, with Jack Russo and others to try to keep you posted along the way. So thank you again for those that continue to support the show. Thank you for those that email and text us and contact us and uh, give us some good feedback. And uh, most of all, I think the, um, you know, the most interaction we get the most, I would say in general, the, when it comes to feedback and comments, I would say 80% of it is that uh, people feel like they're learning. In other words, they're learning, they have education and information as part of the process. And that's really good to hear because that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we've aimed to do. That's the objective from day one. Nine years ago when I started the radio show and now the podcast is to try to do that to keep people really informed and educated. So when it comes time to make a real estate transaction, whether you're buying, selling, financing, doesn't really matter, that you feel like you're making the wise, the most wise decision you can based on the information you have available. And that's what we're aiming to do. So we'll continue to try to work hard at maintaining that focus if we can. So today I want to give a little update. Um, We've been doing just one or two podcasts a week. And today I want to give an update on lending and real estate. I haven't done that. Uh, Last week we just did, uh, uh, you know, some some information on really commercial real estate and other things with Jack Russo. So an update both on lending and real estate. And I'll start with lending. Just as a summary again, interest rates are near all-time lows. And when I say that, they're, you know, hovering around the low threes and with the 15-year money, they're below 3%, and in the mid to high 2%, depending on what your loan amount is, your credit score, paying points, all those things. You really have to be careful with these quotes, and I'll talk a little bit about that in lending, and that um, rates are great right now. So take advantage of them. If you're looking to refinance, take advantage of that. If you're going to own a property long-term, you know, the cost of money is very, very cheap. So take advantage of that and do the best you can. Now, the thing to be aware of is that you'll see rates posted, information posted, a lot of things online. You'll hear on the radio, um, webinars, podcasts, I go on and on. So be very careful. The one question I tell people all the time is they'll ask, Joe, like, how do I know exactly who to trust? How do I know exactly what the costs are? How do I know if the rate's real or not real? All those are great questions. They really are. They're great questions. And the one thing I tell everyone about this very topic, usually the way you could get facts and someone that's really trustworthy as soon as possible to own up to what they're quoting is to simply say this. Ask them, when they quote you a rate, ask them this question. What is the cost of that interest rate? Now, if they answer, well, what do you mean? (laughs) That's a red flag. If they answer, what do you mean? Because if if they don't know what you mean, then I'm not sure if they're, you know, shysters or they should be in the business or maybe they're trying to pull one over. I don't know. It's hard to believe that someone would be that naive if they're in this business. Again, the question is, what is the cost of the interest rate? And I'll go on the detail of that. 
I'll give you an example. If someone says, hey, great news, we could get you a 30-year fix to 2.875 with an APR of 2.987, or I'm just giving an example, right? And that sounds great. Sounds great. Are you kidding me? I could get a 30-year fix for less than 3%. And so it gets people to pick up the phone, it gets them the email, it gets them to exchange, engage, it gets them to get started. So the question, the reason why the question is so important, what is the cost of the interest rate? Is because most online programs, they do what? I call this, I know a lot of people don't like to hear it because they got their head buried in the sand, but it's, it's manipulative marketing and it's misleading. But I understand it. It's not illegal. People talk about an interest rate. Tell me if you haven't heard this before. Great news, call us, you can get an interest rate, 30 year fix for 2.75. And the last part of the, the, the message, you can't even understand because then they proceed for the next 15 seconds to give you the disclosure or the disclaimer. And you can't understand it. It sounds like someone's speaking a foreign language and they're going a million miles an hour. And so to me, that's misleading. It should be legal, but it's not because they're meeting the guidelines. So what they're doing in that ridiculously quick, crazy last minute disclaimer is they're telling you the results of quoting that interest rate because they have to by law. So to give you another example, someone quotes that rate, you get excited, you finally contact someone and you ask them what is the cost of that interest rate? And then they should proceed to tell you something like this, could go a little bit different. They could say something like, well, there's gonna be um, lender fees of $1,250, and then there's gonna be third-party fees like title, escrow, appraisal, those types of things, $2,700, and then there's a one-point charge. And then someone's gonna say, well, what's a one-point charge? So what they're doing in that quote, in this example, is there's roughly, again, let's just call it 1,200 something in lending fee, 27, 2,600, so you're gonna have close to $3,000 in fees. And then they say, that quote comes with a one point cost in addition to the closing costs. So let's say your loan amount's 400,000. One point usually represents 1% of the loan amount they're charging you for that interest rate. So now you have roughly a cost of $7,000 for that interest rate of 2.875, fixed for 30 years. So now you have the cost of that rate. And so I hope that makes sense. This is pretty simple. If you make it simple and if you work with someone that is trustworthy and they're not trying to mislead you, okay? It's, it's not that difficult. What is the cost of the interest rate? Someone in my business should be able to articulate that in 30 seconds or less. And I'll give you an example. Joe, I noticed you're quoting 3% on a 30 year fix, what is the cost of that interest rate? Sure, thanks for asking. It's a lender fee of 1295 and title escrow appraisal, underwriting fees all total another 2600. So basically you're looking at about $2,900 in total cost for that interest rate at 3%. That's it, that's it, it's that simple. So when someone says origination point, application fee, one point, one, so there's, there's other costs involved with that lending. Now, again, this is not illegal. This is not illegal. The problem is in order to get the phone ring, the emails to start moving quickly and the inquiries and the engagement to start, they do, again, that's what I call it, misleading manipulative advertising. And that's not illegal. You just have to understand what you're dealing with. So. I want everyone out there, if you learn nothing today, but one thing from this podcast, when you're looking for a mortgage, whether it's a purchase or refinance, make sure you ask that question when someone quotes you a fee. What is the cost of that interest rate? Honestly, that is the, the best question to ask in this business. Some people will sidewind it. Some people will take a different approach or a different twist or whatever, but trust me on this one. That's the best question to ask in this business. And the reason why is it 
if, if the person's trustworthy and honest and they know what they're doing, he or she is going to be able to give you that answer in 30 seconds or less. If they fumble around, if they say something like, oh, well, it's not that easy. It's kind of complicated. All I can tell you is this is the best rate out there. And if there's anything like that going on, just hang up the phone. Seriously. Because those are all misleading, manipulative behaviors and activities that a lot of people in this business participate in. So be careful of that. And I've, I've offered this before, whether you're working with our team or not, give us a call, check in. If you think you don't understand something, you want us to review, we, we do that all the time for people. Hey, Joe, can you take a look at this and see if this is a fair deal? Hey, Joe, you know, my employer's doing this for me and they, you know, they have a relationship with B of A or Wells Fargo. Can you take a look at this for me? Sure, absolutely. I'll do that. Be sure that you're getting the correct information. So that's the main thing I really want you to take away, hopefully, and understand about lending and when someone quotes you the rate. Again, the last time I'll say it, anytime someone quotes you a rate, the question will always should be to get to the bottom of the details as soon as possible would be what is the cost of that interest rate? All right. So in general, rates are at all-time lows. Keep that in mind. Um, if you're going to own property long-term, it's a great time to lock something in, secure that low cost of money for a savings now and an investment in that appreciating asset being your real estate. And by the way, that also goes for primary residents, second homes, investment properties, uh, all those things as well. Rates are good at this point. One of the other things I want to cover on lending is um, there's a lot of major lenders that have tightened their guidelines. So be very careful when you're getting quotes for refinance, especially those that are getting quotes for purchases, some things you need, really need to be careful of. And by the way, this is major lenders. This Wells Fargo's having a lot of problems. I'm not picking on Wells Fargo, but you know they are, they are a major player. They've been in hot water for years and years, a lot of misleading behaviors and activities, but that has nothing to do with guideline changes. So a lot of major lenders like Wells and B of A and Chase, City, are all making big adjustments on their credit score limits, their loan to value limits, their down payment requirements, on investment properties, primary residence, FHA loans. All I can tell you is there's major changes going on right now with lending. So be very careful. If you get started working with someone, be sure before you get down, go down that path too far that they understand how they could help you and if they're gonna be able to help you. I can't tell you how many clients we have got in the last three or four weeks, we have gotten 25 to 30 new clients in the last three or four weeks because other lenders couldn't do basic lending stuff that we ever, they were able to do two months ago. There's been that many changes. There has been that many changes. And I don't say this to, to scare anybody or, or hopefully instill fright as much as just education. I'll give you some quick examples. Now, if your credit score is less than 700, in some cases, it's really tough. Some won't do financing. If it's less than some at Hemmer and you're trying to get a cash out, some won't do cash out. Some lenders are not doing cash out anymore. It doesn't matter if your home is worth $2 million and you're trying to get a $400,000 loan cash out. Some lenders won't do cash out anymore. So be aware of that. A lot of lenders aren't doing interest only anymore. Be aware of that. Credit scores really made a difference. On jumbo financing, I can tell you if your credit score is below 700, it's going to be a tough, tough route. It's going to be a tough road to try to get lending on jumbo financing if your credit score is below 700. There are some lenders that are doing it as low as 680, but I can tell you that the rates are not good and it may not make sense for you because the rates are a lot higher if you don't have credit scores over 700. So be careful of that. If you're looking into a purchase, be super careful because a purchase, of course, is time sensitive and you're looking at timelines and, and deadlines and contingency periods and people are meeting all these, uh, these issues on a purchase. So make sure who you're working with that you're approved and underwritten approved on a purchase. I've said this before, 
in the last couple of months, I'll keep saying it, certainly in the last 30 days, if you've been approved with some with a lender and you think you're still approved and you haven't checked in with them for several weeks, do, do yourself a favor, check in with them and ask them if you're still legitimately approved. And that may sound funny, but you could have been approved before these guideline changes. And I can tell you that a lot of lenders are not going to call you and say, hey, Joe, by the way, as of two weeks ago, you're not approved anymore. They're not going to do that. <laughs> they're not going to do it. In a perfect world, you wish they would, but they're not going to do it. They just won't. So be proactive, whether it's a refinance or a purchase. Obviously, a purchase is more critical because it's time sensitive and, and you're, in, you know, you're in contract. Make sure you're still approved. Big thing to do, um, work with people you trust. The other thing I would say on a purchase, be very, very cautious if you're working with one of these online lenders, an 800 number or something where you're working with someone in another state or another location and one of your best friend's neighbor's second cousin said, hey, I got this great deal at you know, shopmydeal.com. I'm being funny here a little bit, sarcastic, but there is so many things going on online and people trying to attract business for low cost. Just be super, super careful. And there's two primary reasons for that. One, if you don't have a local relationship with someone where you could see them face to face or you at least know them on a Skype or a or Zoom or something and you don't have previous experience, be careful. There's a lot of new startup companies. There's companies that pay people by the hour, there's, listen to this, there's lenders that pay people that don't even, their employees that are taking calls in other countries and pretending like they're employees. So I don't say this to scare you again, I say it to educate you. It's a very confusing business lending and I don't want people to get misled. Uh, it happens too often. So be careful of that, especially on a purchase, work with someone you trust, really important to do. And if you need a referral for that, let us know. Of course, our team does lending. We've done lending for over 20 years. We refer real estate agents, financial planners, CPAs, landscapers, all that. We do that here at Real Estate Radio Live. All right, let's switch gears a little bit, talk about real estate, real estate market. Um, so it's interesting, if you go back and listen to my podcast over the last several months, I, I have been a big believer that when we eventually come out of this pandemic, that there's going to be pent up demand in real estate. And I do think there's going to be a fair amount of activity. And so far, uh, <laughs> so far, that is coming true. Now, whether that continues, I don't know, but I could tell you this there is a large amount of activity right now in the purchase business. People getting re approved, approved. There's people getting offers turned down. I'm seeing multiple offers already. I'm seeing homes go 10, 15, 20% over asking. This is, this is making me a little nervous, and especially for the buyers. You know, I've been telling buyers for the last six or seven months, get out there and make your deal before we get back to a seller's market. Now, we're not back at a pure seller's market yet. And I say yet. We could. And I'll tell you why. If the demand outpaces the inventory, so if you have a surge in buyer activity and you have all of a sudden buyers are really, really aggressive getting out there and they want to get out and get going after sitting around in this pandemic, yet you have an inventory that's fairly low. I mean, it's not super low, but the inventory is, I don't know what it is today, but maybe, I don't know, 11, 1200. It's not low like it was five or 600 a couple of years ago, but it's low still comparatively speaking. I think an average Santa Clara County inventory for real estate is about 3,000 or so, average. That's, that's kind of the average. So think about that. If we have even say 12 or 1,300 homes listed in Santa Clara County, that's low. And when you have a market like that, and then you have possibly all of a sudden a surge in buyers, you could have a situation where it turns into a bit of a seller's market. So be careful. If you're a buyer, it's still a great time to buy. I would encourage you to get out there and buy sooner than later. I do think that 
I, I don't know. We'll see. I do think by the end of the year or going into the, the third or fourth quarter, we could see a seller's market. And the reason why I think that is that there's still a lot of people that are apprehensive about listing their home or they're concerned about moving or listing because maybe a job's in jeopardy or the pandemic. They're not sure if they want to really get into that and open houses and I could go on and on, right? But on the other side of the spectrum, you have people that are energized to buy now more than they have been in the past. So this could be an interesting dynamic. So I would say this, if you're thinking about buying or you're a buyer, get out there sooner than later, work with a great real estate agent that could get you covered. There are some parameters and guidelines you have to go by with, with COVID-19, private zones, that type of thing. No open houses right now. And get out there and make those offers because I do think I'm, I'm seeing more multiple offers in the last seven to 10 days. I'm seeing that activity pick up, which again, it's good. That's all good. But I'm concerned for buyers. You've heard me say this before, and I probably sound like a bit of a broken record because I saw buyers get beat up several years ago for a couple of years and it was bad. I mean, it was really hard to be a buyer a couple of years ago. And I'd hate to see it get like that again where buyers can't get into a home unless they're putting 20, 30% down, unless they're paying cash. You know, it's just, it's kind of a crazy market. I hope it doesn't get like that again. So let's hope not. Keep in mind that under some of these guidelines, um, again, showing's a little bit different. You will have to sign some additional documentation. Be aware of that. Your real estate agent should tell you that. Be aware of contingency periods. Be aware of legal ramifications now with COVID-19. A lot of these contracts have COVID-19 legal wording in it, which in some cases it's another gives you another opportunity to potentially get out of contract if you're uncomfortable with something or maybe you lose your job. You just have to take a look at these things and keep these things in mind. It's a good thing to do before you obviously make that big move. So as we wrap things up, Couple things I want to go over real quick. Number one, rates are near all time lows. Take advantage right now. If you want to refinance, purchase, anything going on, take advantage. Contact us. Our team could help you with the purchase. We could help you with the refinance. Uh, we could help you with any of financing. Make sure you're working with a solid real estate agent. If you're concerned or you don't have an agent, give us a call. We have a great team of real estate agents that we're partnered with, we could refer. Tax time's coming along. It's changed this year. I think it's, uh, was it June or July? I think July 15th. So if you need any help on CPA side, let us know. We could refer CPAs, financial planners. We also have a handful of great financial planners that we refer people to if they need that support as well. All right. I hope everyone is safe and well. Stay that way. And for all those small businesses out there, we are looking forward and supporting you in any way we can for you to get back on your feet and uh, get back to this market. We really, really see a lot of these poor small business owners struggling during this pandemic. And we hope that you can get back on your feet sooner than later. For more information, you can always contact me 408-838-9060. Or you can email joe at reradiolive.com or for more information, you can just go to reradiolive.com. Remember, you get the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, our website, anywhere like that. Download the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, thank you again, all of you, for supporting our podcast for all the years and the thousands of people who download those podcasts each month. Take care. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.